Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, we take a look at electronic configuration using Obgos method and Anzu in writing electronic configuration. Today we are going to be looking at the most interesting topic, which is the periodic table. The periodic table, understanding the periodic table makes you understand the properties of elements or let me say makes you understand chemistry more because in the periodic table you are going to look at the variation of the properties both the chemical and the physical property of different elements if you can understand this then chemistry of ele elements will be very easier for you now before i move on with my class today i would like you to please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell to receive notification on my new videos thank you now today we'll be looking at the periodic table you see the history of the period the history of what the, the, the history of arrangement of elements or let me say the history of the pattern of elements is dated back to the 18th century whereby a lot of scientists are looking for how can we what what are the pattern and what pattern is shown by elements. How does the property of element changes? So a lot of the four, the four notable scientists did a great work in what explaining to us about the pattern of elements. These four scientists are given. We have the Brina, which stated the law of triad about what elements. We have what John Newland who proposed who who who, um, who proposed the law of repeating octave and then we also have a Russian scientist which is known as Dmitry Mendel Dmitry Dmitry Mendel we may we give a lot an insight about the periodic what is known as periodic table today was done by Dmitry Mendel it was one that tried to arrange the element into rows and columns. Why the third notable scientist in the world is M. Mosley, who tried to us also be explain the periodic table of Dmitry Mendeleev using its own method. Now, what does Dmitry Mendeleev explain to us about the periodic table? He tried to arrange the elements in groups and columns. Sorry, in groups and periods. Whereby we are having eight groups or let me say we have 18 groups because before before we always use the roman numeral to represent the group now the modern periodic table in the modern periodic table it is grouped into what 18 groups whereby we are in the first group second group third group fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen three i think i missed something or uh, one two three one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 group. But before the group is in, in this order, is in this order, we have like, we have 8 group and also we have 7 period, which is my period 1, period 2, period 3, period 4, 5, 6, and 7 period. Now, what is a periodic table? Periodic table is the arrangement of elements in a table. In a, in a table, in an order of what, sorry, in rows and columns in a table. That's what I call a periodic table. Now, this idea was given to us by what? Um, Dimitri Mendeleev, like this, was given to us by Dimitri Mendeleev. But then, Dimitri Mendeleev tried to state, they tried to relate the properties of elements in the periodic table with the atomic weights. Then he stated a law, which is known as periodic law. He said what? He said the physical and the chemical property of elements in the periodic table are periodic function of the atomic weights. Then he was able to apply his own law to arrange some elements, even though then some elements were not known then. But they were tremendously tried to arrange the element that was known by then using his own law and it fits into the periodic table. Then they were tremendously. Give some left some space in the periodic table 
so that if elements are further what being discovered, they are going to fit into the block. Although some elements are further discovered later and they fit into the periodic table. But there is always a what? A problem with this block. There are some elements that are able to what fit into this periodic what, table. So by then, a scientist is known as what Henry Mosley try to restate its own, which is not for which is not what is what is known. Its law is what is known as the modern periodic table. Well, let me say that's what built up the modern periodic table they are using today. What does this law state? It law states that the physical and the chemical property are periodic function of atomic number. That means the physical and the chemical property of elements in the periodic table are periodic function of their atomic number. That means it depends on their what? atomic number. That was what um, I will mostly explain. So that was what is known as the, what, the modern periodic table that we are using today. Now, let's see now that what? Elements are grouped into what? Eight group and seven period in the periodic table. Also, this periodic table is divided into three. We have a periodic table we have some of the elements, some parts of the elements are metals. Elements are grouped into metals, non-metals, 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 and the metalloids. Metalloids. Now you know that what? Metals are always found within the group 1. Group 1A, one they are what? Metals. Group 2A is also metal. But majorly, I always advise to learn about You see, majorly 80% of elements in the periodic table are grouped into what? Metal. Why 20% are grouped into non metals? Please note something. If you watch here, I was able to explain this that we have what? 1A element, 2A element, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, and 7A, 8A elements. But when we get to copper, we have 1B, 2B. Now, please note something. Elements are grouped into majorly the one A elements are all metals. The one A elements are all what metals. Just that depends on the kind of metal that they have. Starting from here, these are metal with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen does not fit into this what place. Hydrogen is neither a metal nor not, uh, no, it's not a metal. Sorry. So hydrogen does not fit here. One A elements are metals. Two A elements are metals. The 3A, 4A to 8A elements are metals. Now, majorly, the B elements are non-metals. The B elements are non-metals. But not all the old B elements that are there are non-metal. The B elements that are non-metals, with the exception of boron, silicon, germanium, and then arsenic, also, also tellurium. Arsenic, tellurium. They are not metals. These four elements, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, and tellurium, they are otherwise known as what? Metalloids. Metalloids are elements that have this set that are what? That can exist, that, sorry, that has the characteristic of a metal and also a non metal. Please note that. Now, part of the uh, metalloids that are used in electronics device, such as in what? On, in our, in all these digital electronics are otherwise known as semiconductors. So, part of these five metals that we have boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, and tellurium. These three amongst them, silicon, germanium, and arsenic, they are otherwise known as semiconductors. Majorly, it is silicon and germanium. So, if silicon and germanium are what? Semiconductor. You see, this arsenic can be used to dope. To dope them. Are you getting something now? So, silicon and germanium are known as what? The semiconductor. Now, I said something earlier on that was all group, all 1A elements are metals. Why B elements, sorry, sorry, all A elements are metals. Why B elements are classified as what? Non metal. They can also be classified as what? Metal. And they can be classified as what? Metalloids. Please note that. Now, in the B elements, the metals that are in B elements, like the 1B, the 2B, and the 3B, they have a varying property that is different from the 1A and the 2A, which is the major elements, major what? metals that we have here. Now, they have a varying element, sorry, they have a varying characteristic to 1A and 2A. Like for example, the 1A and 2A, or let's say the 1A element 
are highly reactive metals. That means they are highly what reactive metals. But you see, these two B element, one B, two B element, they are least reactive metal, even though some of them does not even react. So there are some other properties that differentiate the one A metal from the one F one B, two B, three B metals. Please, in this three B metal, the only metals that are found in this B are starting from copper, like this: copper, silver, gold, zinc, cadmium, mercury, um, aluminium. Germanium from here, C, lead, bismuth, like this, in this order, like this, this thing, aluminium, like this, from here, like this, like this, sorry, they are all B metals. But this B metal has very characteristic to this element. One of their differences, they are different between A metals and B metal. One of the difference between them is that what? Majorly, most A metals form ionic bonding, but most of these B metals, they do form covalent bonding. Some of them form what? Covalent bonding. For example, now, aluminium has the ability to form what? Covalent what? Bonded, sorry, covalent what? Bonded compound. For example, aluminium can form aluminium 3 chloride, maybe, which is a covalent bond. All together, while potassium will undergo Sorry, on the whole, what ionic bonding. That's one of their characteristics. Another characteristic is that you see, literally all these B elements has the ability to have more than two oxidation states, more than one oxidation state, unlike all these that have a single oxidation state. Let's take a look at copper. Copper has two oxidation states. Zinc, sorry, copper has what? Oxidation states of plus one, copper one plus, and what? Copper two plus. These are two oxidation states of copper. Now, the same thing applies to aluminium. Are we together? Now, each of these, and also, sorry, copper has more than one oxidation state. T has more than what? one oxidation state. We can have T2 plus, SN2 plus, and what? T4 plus. Likewise, lead can have more than one oxidation state, and tellurium can have tellurium 1 plus and tellurium 3 plus. Now, all these are metals, but they have varying property from the group 1 metals. Please note that. Now, take a look at another thing else. Majorly, some of these metals can form, this B metal can form complex ion. Why the 1A, 2A metals, which are the major metal, does not form complex ions? All together, for example, now, aluminium can form what? Aluminium oxide, ALOH, into what? Minus 3 and 6. This is a complex ion. Aluminium has the ability to form complex ion. Why all these metals that are here does not form complex ion? Another property of this thing is their oxide. Now, some of these metals that are here in the group 1 and group 2, majorly they form basic oxide. Please note, note that. They form what? Basic oxide. Whenever metal reacts, sorry, the oxide of metals are always basic oxide, while the oxide of non metals are what? Acidic oxide. So, majorly all these metals that are here, they form basic oxide. Why the group that the 3B was metal? Not only the 3B metals, they form what? Amphoteric oxide. For example, zinc oxide is amphoteric in nature. Aluminium oxide is also what? Amphoteric what? in nature. Once said amphoteric oxide, these are oxide that can behave as an acid and also they can also behave as a base. So the group, the, the, the B metals can exhibit this property. They don't have a single basic oxide. Please note that. That is one thing that we can group the words elements into what metals and metalloid. I'm giving out the metalloid that is here are boron, silicon, arsenic, germanium, and tellurium, which are metalloid. Now, you now see starting from carbon, phosphorus, selenium, indium, uh, sorry, iodine. As thirteen, like this, they are all non-metals. These are non-metals. Like, these are what non-metals. That's why I said the B metals, the B element can be grouped into metal, non-metals, and metalloid. Unlike the A element, that they are all metals. Now, so the element, the periodic table is grouped into what A and what the B element. That is one grouping of the periodic table.
Now, another grouping of the periodic table is that the periodic table are grouped majorly into metals, and I stated there on the non metals and also the transitional metals. Out of these one A elements that we said here, we normally call the elements within group two and group three the transition elements. All these elements that are found here are known as transition elements from here to here. They are transitional transition elements. Transition elements. The elements from year to year are transition elements. All together, these are transition elements. You know, as I said earlier on, you see, majorly this Z does not belong to them sometimes because it's what? It's a B element. It does not belong to the transition element. It doesn't have their characteristic completely. It just possesses little part of their characteristic. Now, we have transition elements. Out of the transition elements, we also have what called what? The inner transition elements. So the inner of transition, we have the transition, the major transition element, which is from scandium to zinc, or these are what major transition elements, and also the utrium, zinchromium, nobium, and molybdenum, actinium, ruthenium, radium, and palladium, silver, and the likes. Now, from here we also have what the inner transition elements. Starting from all this, there are what inner transitional elements that we have. Now. Please note, we group them into metals, um, transition metals, and non-metals. And also, it is the, the group that is found in this, which is the group 8 element, are otherwise known as the noble gases. The noble gases, or we call them the rare, rare gases. Now, please note, one of the characteristics of these noble gases, I said earlier on that, the noble gases does not take part in any forms of chemical reaction. And one of the reasons why they don't take part in chemical reaction is because the noble gases has completely filled orbital. It simply shows that what, they, they, complete, they have their octet, they have an octet structure. So they neither give up electron nor accept electron from any other elements. That is for the group 8 elements. The group 8 elements. But one of the group 8 elements try to show a kind of what, chemical reaction like xenon. Xenon, a little bit shows some kind of what, reaction with other elements. All together, only xenon. Now, from here, let's continue. Again, the periodic table can be grouped into four. That means we divide the periodic table into four blocks. It is divided, the periodic table is divided into what? Blocks. So, there are four blocks. Block simply means, depends, sorry. It is divided into blocks depending on where their last valence electron, that is the orbital, which occupy their last valence electron. So we divide the periodic table into four blocks, whereby the periodic table can be divided into from group one, the group one and the group two are taken as the S block elements. S block elements. The group four to this, we call it what? The D block elements. The D block elements, while from here, group 3B to what? 4B are known as the P block elements. P block elements. Now, we now have the lactinine and the actinine series. That means in this region here, we have another element which is known as what? the lactinine and what? Actinine series. This lactinine and actinine series are taken as the F block elements. F block elements. Element. What does this block mean? You know, I said we divide the periodic table into blocks. The block simply means where their, where their last valence electron falls into. That's where we, we divide this periodic table into. Now, look at something here. Let me give you something. Why, why is that all these ones are what X block? That's one of the reasons why hydrogen is placed in group one. Not because it's, in family of, it's among the family of group one metals, but because it has its valence electron, the last electron in it, in this x orbital. Now, if you check, take a look at something here, I have this kind of thing here. Um, my hydrogen is equal to 1s1. The electron in s orbital is equal to 1. Now, if you take a look at beryllium, beryllium is atomic number is 1, 2, 3, 4. Atomic number 4. If I have electric configuration of beryllium, I have 1s2, 2s2, which shows that what 
the last electron, the base electron of beryllium is found in the what? S orbital also. This is the balance selection of what? Beryllium. So because of that, beryllium belongs to what? The S orbital. All these uh, all these elements that are found in this place, from 1 to 2, they have their balance electron in the S orbital. That's why we group them as what S block elements. Now the elements here from scandium to zinc to zinc, silver, they have their own balance electron in the D block, in the D orbital. That's why they are termed as what D block. D block that belongs to what D orbitals. Now, from boron to helium, they have their own valence electron in the P orbital. That means, look at boron. Boron is atomic number 5, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, which is its own valence electron is also found in what? In the P orbital. So, elements are grouped into what? Blocks. So, the periodic term is what? Divided into blocks, where we have the S block, the D block element, the P block element, and the what? F block element. Now, we can also divide the periodic table, okay? I think we said it divided into metal, metalloids, non metals, then into blocks. Are we? Now, let's take a look at some elements. There are some elements that have special characteristics in this place. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to check a look at something. Um, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Now, again, take a look at something here. You see, majorly some groups have their own special name that is given to them based on the kind of property that it was exhibits. That is, sorry, kind of what characteristic that it exhibits. Then, for instance, the group one elements are otherwise known as alkaline metal. Group 1 elements are known as alkaline metal. Alkaline. Sorry, can I flip it to rub off this? Group 1 elements are known as alkaline metals. The one I said they are metal, so we call them the alkaline metal. Why are they called alkaline? Alkaline simply means base. Why? Whenever each of these metals in group 1, when they react with ox and with what? Of their oxide, their kind of oxide that they form is what an alkaline. They form an alkaline when they react with sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. When they react with water, they form alkaline solution. That's why we call them what alkaline metal. Now, the group one elements are very reactive. They are the most reactive metals that is found in the periodic table. The most reactive metals are the group one element. Please don't forget the one B element. They are less reactive compared to one A elements. All together. So each of these elements in group one, they are very reactive. Whereby the most, or let's say the most reactive element in them is the francium. Francium that is found in the last period of the group now is the most reactive metal that is found on Earth. Please note that. Now the group one elements are otherwise known as what alkaline metal because when they react with um, whenever they react with water, they form the alkaline solution. Like for example, when sodium reacts with water, it is going to form sodium hydroxide. It will form sodium hydroxide, which is an alkaline solution. Please note, this is a base. I get something now. So a base that is soluble is all called alkaline. What alkaline? A base that is soluble is all called an alkaline. Now, all these elements in this group form the same alkaline. Please note, they form what? Their own alkaline. That's why they are known as alkaline metals. All together. Now, the group 2 elements are known as alkaline earth metals. Alkaline metal, earth metals, these are the names given to them. So they are known as what? Alkaline earth metals. We are, whereby they too, they react with water. But they have a less reaction with water. Their reaction with water is uncomparable to the reaction of the group 1 element with metal. That's why. With water, sorry, that's why we call them alkaline earth metal. Alkaline earth metals. The group two elements are known as alkaline earth metal. That is the group name. Now, the group three elements, we call them the boron family. The boron what family. Now, also we have the group four elements. But now, the, now the group five elements, we call them the what? The nictogen. Nictogen family. The nictogen family. Group 5 elements are known as what? Nictogen. 
family. We have the nitrogen family. Why the group six elements are known as the chacogen family? Chacogen family. Chacogen family. Why the group seven elements are otherwise known as the allogen family? Sorry, we have this one as the chacogen. Why the group seven are known as the allogen family? Allogen family. Now, you see, this allogen family. And then, just like in the alkaline metals, you know I said earlier on that francium is most reactive and one of the major properties of the alkaline metals is that what? They are good, good reducing agents. Why the most reducing agents that, that we have in the periodic table is francium. They are what? Highly what? Reducing agent. Compared to the group 2 elements, then they are what? They are what? Because of their less reactivity and less reaction, I want to get that. They are not close, but people though they are not even with, uh, they, most of them sometimes they don't react with water to form their words alkaline. So they are not what a reducing agent compared to others. Now you see the group three, the group seven elements, which is the allogen compound, they are what oxidizing agent. So the high, uh, the one with what highest oxidizing ability is fluorine. Fluorine is the one with the highest oxidizing ability. We are by all these group seven elements, they are what oxidizing what agent. So the name given to them, we call them the what? The allergen family. As we have the, what, the noble gases, as we also have the noble gases, or we call them the rare metals. Rare what? Sorry, the words. Rare gases. Which is not, they are also known as what, the rare gases. Now, these are the explanation of what? The periodic table. How? We, now, we can also write, we can determine the, 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 the period in which an element belongs to. If you understand the electronic configuration of the element, let's say for example, like beryllium, the electronic configuration of beryllium is given to us in this case here. I can determine which orbital, or sorry, which group does beryllium belong to by writing the electronic configuration of what beryllium. Now, the group that it belongs to is their valence electron. If you watch here, beryllium has what its own valence electron. Don't forget that valence electron is the electron in the last subshell. In the last shell, not soft shell, in the last shell, the last shell here is the second shell, and the valence electron here is what? Is two. Now, if the second shell, you see, the last shell denotes the period in which the element belongs to, while the valence electron there denotes the group in which the element belongs to. So for beryllium, from its electronic combination, beryllium belongs, belongs to period, I'm sorry, group two, period two. If you check the periodic table, this is my period 2, which is beryllium, and this is our group 2, which is written here. So we can get the, the uh, sorry, we can, we can get the group and the period in which an element belongs to by writing the electronic configuration of that element. Thank you for watching my video. Please try to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification, notification bell to receive notification on my new videos. Thank you very much.